take Molly co-host and then we're gonna hit record. Gotta go. Okay. okay. Um, great, everyone. Hello, I am Becky Raymond. I'm the executive director of Scale It. I am chairing this work group, service integration policy. I think pretty much everyone has been with us before, um, but welcome. Uh, Sarah will do a roll call in a second. We will um, review the charge, the priorities, the goals of this work group. I know many of you sit on several work groups and committees, so we always have to anchor ourselves in the charge, priorities and goals. We're going to review a timeline and um, invite you to a work day. Um, we're gonna talk about the workflow and the work plan. And um, we're gonna talk about some pieces of the policy that we determined very early on in this work group that they were outside of the scope of this committee and how we'll address those parts of the policy that we are not going to um, address directly here. And then we're gonna have a focus group overview and um, Brian Richard is here with us from NIU. He has, um, along with Molly and Sarah, have codified a lot of data and tried to put it in um, as much sense. We heard from so many voices in the work groups, in the focus groups. So I'm excited to hear from him. Um, Drew is not here today. Is that right, Sarah? I don't think so. There's one, there's a Drew Otter oh. on the, uh, so. Oh, that uh, might be true. Okay. We'll, just see. Uh, we'll see what happens um, with that piece. And then we'll talk about writing days and next steps. So from here, I will let Sarah do the roll call. Hi all, I'm just gonna read the name in the Zoom participant list as they appear to me. If you don't hear your name, please go ahead and put it into the, the chat and we'll make sure it's noted in the notes. So I see Becky Raymond, Molly Cook, Courtney Geiger, Kathy Olson Tracy, Laura Dom, Brian Richard, Sarah Goldhammer, Carrie Thomas, Stacy Kregel, Marissa Lewis, Justin Arnold, Renee Patrick, Amy Julian, Eric Hansen, Tara Driver, Drew's Otter AI, which I'm thinking is a recording device, um, Janice Taylor Brown, Andy Lasasso, Rena Bryson, Todd Lowry, Natasha Telger, and Francisco Alvarado. And I apologize if I have gotten your names mispronounced. If you haven't heard your name, please go ahead and put it in the chat and I'll pass it back over to Becky. Great. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. It's great to see so many enthusiastic participants for service integration. Um, uh, again, we have a community agreement to keep customers central to the discussion, to take and make space, um, avoid jargon as much as possible, and explain acronyms. And together, we know a lot. The priorities of this work group are um, to integrate service delivery, improving access and opportunity for all populations, cross-agency collaboration and alignment for developing and or promoting career pathways and industry-recognized stackable credentials to review the 2019 self-assessment process and the relevance in a post-COVID environment. And we are reassessing the current service integration policy and related resources to understand the barriers to integrated services, service integrations, relation, um, current relation to post-COVID and opportunities to improve um, operations long-term with the ultimate goal of revising the policy by May of this year. Um, so just again, thinking of the timeline, if we are to impact our workforce system, the policy must be revised by May so that we can present it to 
the IWIB in June. So um, we have had a recommendation from the core partners that this group come together in March for a writing day. Um, we're proposing March 13th from 10 to 3. And the goal is to use the focus group responses to revise our three goals. Um, and the calendar invite will be sent out after the meeting. From there, when we meet in April, we'll have a lot of the language thought through and um, we'll be ready to present to the IWIB in June. Okay, any? Okay. So from here, just, and just raise your hand if anybody wants to interject um, as I go through this. The, the meeting of our, towards our deadline, again, these are the steps that we've taken. Um, in this work group, the slide shows the journey of this work group in exploring the historical and current issues around service integration. And we are now at a point where we are going to use this information to address the charge and priority of, of this group. To, um, to that end, IWIB is forming a service integration policy work group to convey state level expectations of local workforce areas as they address this critically important feature of their one-stop centers. So again, the priorities are to integrate service delivery, cross agency collaboration and alignment, and reviewing the 2019 self-assessment. We will use the data from the past historical documents and the focus groups, which Brian Richard will review shortly, to address each of these areas in either policy revision or, in, or recommendations to accompany the policy. For example, what policy changes recommendations can be made to convey the state level expectation to further and or promote career pathways and stackable credentials and to review the self-assessment process um, given virtual services. So um, again, reiterating today's focus in the work plan on the next slide. Thank you, Sarah. Um, today we are having the focus group review the policy versus implementation, if Drew is able to present it. Again, I'm not sure if he's feeling well enough to talk about the writing day and the goals for the outside work group. Okay. So in the beginning of the work group, um, several members of the work group said, that some areas of this comprehensive policy were better suited to um, be addressed by other committees or other work groups. So here we have four areas that we are not going to be considering in terms of us addressing it ourselves. And so um, Molly and Sarah B have taken the time to really, um, yeah, sorry, it's a little small there. I don't know if you can make it bigger, Sarah B. Um, so I don't know, Molly, if you want to talk through the piece of how these, how we could fit these areas into other, other committee work. Yeah, uh, Sarah, do you want to start and then I'll jump in uh, regarding maybe like the CPCP place uh, piece in a minute? Yep. Um, so I think in November or October of last year, we had talked about which goals were outside the scope, as Becky was saying, and we earmarked a couple of Iowa groups or committees um, that would we would hand off these goals to, to make sure that they're still in alignment with um, the state's vision for service integration. So um, the first, which is staff goals, this is, and this is 
how it's written currently in the policy was earmarked for the professional development committee. And we were thinking that the work group, our work group, have volunteer ambassadors to take this to those work groups to kind of introduce the goal and uh, see if it needs to be revised from their point of view and expertise. So for the first goal, which is the staff goal, it was earmarked as the professional development committee. Is that still where we would like it to go? And if so, is there someone from this group that would like to be the ambassador? Carrie has your hand, have your hand raised. Um, I wonder about C, communication across one-stop partners is consistent, comprehensive, and timely. Okay. I feel like that is also, um, that is not just a professional development thing. I um, And the only, I don't know what other people think, but it a little bit on the technical assistance team, it could, fall and in there but you know that's not I don't know if others have a thought but I would just say that Kathy I agree with what she um, is saying that communication isn't really professional development so how would we feel about changing um, C to professional development across one-stop partners is consistent, comprehensive, and timely, and that stays in the professional development space. And um, I, I think that's gonna kind of connect what we're doing. And I do think that, um, and I don't know where it would land, but I do think communication is something we recognize is um, a challenge. So it needs to be addressed. Perhaps that's addressed through the technical assistance committee, perhaps that's addressed in another location but I don't wanna lose the communication as an issue because we found it and we know it happens. It needs to be addressed, but I would suggest we change as you did professional development here. And then we add communication across one-stop partners. And I would further that to saying communication across all title partners because um, that will connect our one stops, our one, our you know, our comprehensive one stops, our people that are coming in through languages, our titles, so that everyone's on the same page. So that to me is broader on the communication spectrum of all party, all titles um, have a streamlined communication process or something like that. I don't know where that lives. Okay, Karen. I, I would just say. I'm, I'm, I, I might have misheard you, Kathy. So I'm like partly trying to clarify. So, are you trying to broaden the definition of partners in this? Because core partners to me is narrower than one-stop partners. No, I, 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 I'm thinking it's core partners um, that we talk about. Core partners, not one-stop partners. To your point, it is broader, and we do have a broad range here. So I think it should be the core partners. I would agree with that. Um, but I also recognize that we had some challenges with communication um, as it came out originally through our one-stop partners. Um, so I don't know where the communication lives and if the communication should be through one-stop partners or through the core partners. I don't have an opinion on that one. I will um, defer that to this group and support the direction, but I just think this needs professional development across all core partners that makes sense? Well, I think you're saying from our experience in organizing the focus groups that going through the one-stop partners, it, it needs to be broader and more comprehensive than that. Is that what you're saying? It, it does. It does. And I, and to Carrie's point is, is if I'm here, if I'm interpreting it correctly, is focusing on the core partnerships, um, our four titles, not just the one stop two, because it is broader and service integration is broader than only the one stop. So that's a part of it, but just not the only part. Carrie? No. Okay. I, I, Sorry. I, 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 you could just leave it as partners, it's fine. <laughs> like, I agree with the broader. I can't get into I, what you call it is going to look different everywhere. So just call it partners is good. Yeah. Todd, did you have something? 
Yeah, I hate to counter Curious's last statement, but if you're going to expand upon we own our language, the only control, real control we have, our core partner control, if you're going to make policy in that regard, I would think. That's, that's all I was going to say on that. We can put that in the parking lot. To yeah. We haven't really rolled it out yet, but or we have the writing day. So I'll make a note, and Molly will make a note of this too, I think, in the notes to go over the language before we do pass it off to um, other groups. But it does look like Amy has volunteered to be the ambassador for this school. And then Molly, do you wanna explain the Career Pathways School? Yeah, <clears throat> sorry, yeah, sure. So um, in this one, we're talking about career pathways, again, across education, workforce, economic development, um, and being able to build those for Illinois residents. So we have a Career Pathways for Targeted Populations Committee of the IWIB, and that group meets next at, at their quarterly meeting, March 17th. Um, so this would be definitely something we could bring to that group. Do, do we have any representatives from that committee that could volunteer to bring this issue into the meeting on March 17th? I can uh, volunteer someone who I know is on the committee <laughs> or suggestive volunteer. Um, so like I can, I can definitely bring it. Todd is also on the CPTV. So if Todd and I maybe could work together um, how would you feel about that, Todd, if we brought it together? No problem at all. Okay, great. <laughs> Good job. All right. The next is the information goals. This was a goal that we did not earmark a committee for when we discussed this last fall. Um, the goal is on the screen. And I hope if, it, if it's not big enough, it, you all let me know and I'll zoom in more. Um, but is there a group of the iWeb? that we think could look over this goal? And if so, do we have an ambassador for this goal? Well, I feel like, isn't there some kind of IWIB committee that does stuff about data? I mean, this is, first of all, we don't, it could simply, we don't have to have a committee, but um, I think this is about actionable labor market information. That's kind of how I understood it. And I thought there was some kind of committee that was around, like maybe it's continuous improvement committee or something. I don't know. Um, there is a CI, the continuous improvement committee, the CIC, and there is a quite a few people from this group on that. I don't know if that group wants to talk to Carrie's maybe suggestion of putting it to the CIC for this goal. I think a fit could actually be sending it to the performance work group of the CIC. Oh, so you're right yeah. within the CIC, but the performance work group might be a good starting point for this. Um, and you're right, there's so many work groups. It's like, where, you know, where do they all fit? Yeah. But yes. Um, it I think this particular data is about using data to inform, like it says, inform career planning and sector-based initiatives and that kind of thing. So it's different from performance, but if, yeah, so if there should be a place where that gets discussed, but I don't know. Good idea. Is there anybody from the performance work group on this call that would feel comfortable taking the goal to that group? I guess my question, it, it's almost a professional development because I mean the data is widely available. Anybody can go get labor market information. It's how they use it. Um, at least that, that last point. These are two very different points. Yeah, I wondered if it was professional development too. When when I'm working at the local level with different partners, uh, it doesn't seem like everyone knows uh, what managers should do, what staff should do, 
how to kind of talk through things as partners, convey that to staff, um, take action as a group. Um, so I don't know, like performance makes me think of data that you can evaluate and see if you're um, on target where some of the stuff about managers and staff, um, um, it seems more of a professional development situation. But then the second part about current and timely labor market information, that one's a little bit more difficult to know where, what to do with that one. Could we split it up? Can we do professional development for the first bullet and then the performance work group for the second bullet? Yeah, I think that makes the most sense. And Amy, as the ambassador for the other professional development goal, would you feel comfortable with this first bullet to that committee? Yeah, we can talk about how we can develop professional development around use. And then Brian, does that make you feel more comfortable? I'm, I'm assuming you're on the performance work group. Well, actually my, my point that was that the second bullet point to me is professional development about labor market information because you know, it's, that information is widely available. I just think it's a case of knowing how to use it. Thank you, Brian, because I, I was kind of thinking the same thing. The second bullet seems much more applicable to professional development managers and staff share information as appropriate and feasible on all one-stop partners is more something. Would that be like a technical assistant team thing? Because I mean, we can do PD on how to use it and where to find it, but we can't, we're not in a position to provide regulation. That's not our role. Yeah, I don't know how other groups work, um, but like looking at an IDS and a DHS, um, sometimes managers can do some things, but they don't know how to do other things. And they will say, well, if you want us to do this, we don't know how to do it. And if someone from on high tells us to do something, maybe we can. And then the staff don't really know like I'll be talking to the managers in a partner's meeting, but then their staff don't know that that's ever been a discussion. Um, and it, with uh, with adult ed, it's a little bit different, but you still, there's a kind of a distinction between who's running the adult ed and then um, their frontline staff and maybe deans at the college. So there seems to be generally a need for professional development on how to share information, how to direct groups, how to coordinate a local area, um, to work together. It does, it seems to be a professional development need, but um, as far as I've just seen the need. Well, I think we're gonna have to put that one in the parking, that first bullet in a in the parking lot for a second, just because we have so much content to get through um, today. To me, it seems like it would be the CIC's um, performance committee, but um, we could maybe, I, I don't know, it doesn't seem like there's clear consensus on it. So I don't wanna delay the agenda too much because we still have, goal seven to hand that one over to the evaluation work group, which has a meeting coming up and we're looking for someone to take that one on. Kathy, I think you're, are you on that work group? The evaluation work group? I can do that. We'll, um, we have a meeting um, next week. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Good job. Okay, so then we will communicate with 
professional development CAC PD for this goal six and move forward. Thank you everyone for your volunteering. I wanna go ahead and do presentation mode now and move on to the next slide. Okay, so when we were together last time, it was pointed out that um, our first round of focus groups needed more input, had, you know, lacked the whole state and all the titles. And so I really, again, want to acknowledge Molly and Sarah um, for rolling up their sleeves. Stacy from my team was also part of it. And we were able to host in total nine focus group rooms. So we had so many people signing up for some of the focus group sessions that we had to have breakout rooms. We had all LWIAs represented. We had all titles represented and we had in total 110 registrants. So you can imagine that when we look at the questions, just to review, asking um, individuals about how the goals are working in their areas, how it's implemented, you know, how virtual services impacted your goal. We had a lot of data at the end of our time with um, the focus group attendees. And just also to reiterate, we were asking them about customer-centered design, intake and assessment, and the service goals, which is the longest one at the end there. So um, from here, I am going to turn it over to Brian. Richard, who did an amazing job. I'm also very grateful to him for how he was able to go in and pull this data together. It was a lot of input and it was a very short turnaround that they um, pulled it together. And so from here, I will turn it over to Brian. All right, so I'm just gonna uh, present some of that, that high level findings, just some highlights from, from what we found and, and how it relates to some of the, the 2019 uh, self-assessment themes. We're going to put together a more detailed analysis of all of this and get to you in advance of writing day uh, uh, next month, but um, just kind of wanted to share some of the high level findings. And I guess it, we can move to the next slide, the, the, the big picture is that for the most part, we keep hearing the same thing over and over again uh, as, as we ask about this, um, you know, customer intake, uh, you know, there, there's not a universal intake form. So each, uh, each provider, each uh, partner has a different intake form. And in most cases, there's not ways of sharing data that is collected. So it results in uh, if somebody wants to access services from uh, multiple partners, they have to do multiple intake processes. Um, the next one, uh, staff training. He here's an area where uh, the, the focus groups that we just held indicated that we're making some progress uh, around staff, uh, uh, staff training. Um, you know, it actually came up in the focus groups that, well, we found some things in 2019 that we've addressed. We, we've, in some er local areas, there is cross-training among partners um, to, to improve understanding. So this is good news, although uh, it, I think there's still uh, work to be done in, in some local areas. Um, next slide. Uh, again, partner referrals, this is, kind of similar to the intake form is that uh, there, there appears to be a need for more standardized referral process forms, data sharing kinds of things. Um, frontline staff input, a big finding from the 2019 self-assessments is that the system needs to do better of, about learning from frontline staff. I think this, this uh, process that we just went through is an example of how uh, that's being done this time around. So I think that's another positive uh, takeaway from this. And then uh, just a, a final slide here um, about customer-centered design. Um, I think just uh, another important area of, of feedback about service 
service pro provision is from the customers themselves. Um, the, the, there are customer satisfaction surveys going on throughout the system. I think maybe we need to look at standardizing them across uh, all of the local areas and maybe across the partners to get a more standardized uh, and systematic way of collecting this information so it makes it easier to uh, analyze and, and find areas for improvement out of uh, that, those processes. So that's um, some of the summaries that, that we found. And again, we'll be sharing more detailed information uh, ahead of uh, the next meeting so that it can inform what we do there. Okay, thanks, Brian. Um, so as Brian mentioned, we'll be sharing out more detailed information ahead of writing day, but these are the, the common themes that came up in the focus groups and um, Again, they've aligned with a lot of the things that we've heard from 2019 self-assessment. And um, so I'm sorry that Drew is not here to talk next about policy versus recommendation, um, but we will be sure to um, have, have his very clear guidance on on this piece so that especially through, from the focus groups there have been a lot of recommendations there are a lot of things that are bright spots promising practices things that we would probably want to recommend but maybe not um, embed into the policy itself and so before writing day we will um, definitely hear from drew i don't i don't know we'll have to figure out the timing on that sarah if it'll be at the top of the writing day or if there's some kind of tutorial that he'll give us before we come together in person but um that you know people get sick drew's sick okay we'll have to we have to postpone it so um with that being said um you know, we are planning the um, the writing day. And so I don't know if you have the next slide to talk about the logistics of coming together. Um, we will be sending out um, pre-reading, focus group feedback, you know, the policy itself. We're asking everyone to bring their laptop or some type of electronic device. This will be kind of a roll, this will definitely be a roll up our sleeves and, um, you know, collaboratively working on the policy together. Um, from here. So I don't know if you want to share any other information, Sarah, about logistics for the day. Um, well, it's still in draft form. Internally, we're still going over the best way to structure it so everyone's time is well spent and the goals that we need to revise or potentially revise are met while we also include previous historical research and while we also include the feedback from the focus groups. So if you all have any questions about writing day, um, now is a great time that we can talk about that. And then we'll use that day to really figure out how to revise each goal, if each goal needs to be revised, and then potential recommendations that we can propose alongside with the revised policy. Um, and then in March, we'll come back together and um, go over the work that we've done and then proceed with the work that's still left to be uh, done with this group. So does anybody have any questions or feedback? I, uh, I may I just, have missed this, Todd. I, I may have missed this, but do we have um, um, the 2019 self-assessments we have, do, do we have, uh, you know, a current state to kind of stand up side by side about how we assessed ourselves in 2019 and whether or not we made, you know, some type of complete evaluation of those four years. 
I'll let Brian maybe speak to that. Uh, not really. Um, so nothing systematic for sure. I mean, I, there, there was some discussion at some level about trying to redo that process, but that was it, that was a, a big lift for local areas to go through that. It, it took a, a lot of effort for them and I just uh, hasn't been undertaken again. But as Brian said in his presentation, there were quite a few participants that referenced their 2019 self-assessment and their feedback with the focus groups. Um, I wouldn't say that every local area referenced their 2019 self-assessments, but we do feel like we have a pretty good look of what's happening at on the front line um, in order to move forward with whatever revisions need to be made. Yeah, and you know that was kind of my thought on this too. Is if if you're doing the survey, this is kind of a reminder of how this worked itself in 2019, and it gives people time to ponder and think as to whether we made progress or improvements in areas that were identified as lacking. So, I, I think that's happened in areas in pockets. Todd, I don't know if I caught that whole statement. I don't know if it's my audio. No, it's mine. I don't have a headphones for Zoom. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Sometimes Zoom has a wild hair, though. Okay. Is that the only question we have about any of the work done so far, the movement forward? I just wanted to add one comment. Um, if you are unable to attend writing day, uh, Sarah and Becky, correct me, um, but I'm pretty sure there will be an opportunity for you to be able to submit some feedback or thoughts um, in writing to us in a different way. So if you're unable to attend, uh, we can still get your feedback in that way. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, absolutely. The exact address. So Ronnie, I'll be sending out, we're working on a registration right now, um, in-person days require a little bit more detail coordination than a Zoom meeting. So we'll be sending out registration with the exact address and um, the pre-reads and all of that very shortly. I think we have a meeting on Thursday of this week to finalize plans. So I'm not sure of the exact address in this moment, but you'll have it very shortly. Great, thank you. No problem. Okay. Okay. Well, if you have questions after this meeting that don't occur to you um, in this moment, um, feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to provide any other context um, to this process. I'm really excited to be in person. I think. Um, it will be uh, great to be together and to um, work on the policy in person. I think it's the best approach um, as we finalize um, the policy changes that we're going to make. And um, I appreciate your time and look forward to connecting again soon. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. I wonder, is that like Drew's, Drew, see, that's like on, those things get like on people's Zooms. Like if Drew was using, I don't know. No, I'm wrong. Yeah, Stacy's looking at me. We're still recording. We can also remove him. Yeah, let me, I'll 